Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Second Chronicles chapter 21, and this has got to be the worst judgment I've read, aside from like what happened to Job, which was really horrible, but that wasn't a judgment, that was Satan tempting him, Satan trying him, Satan abusing him, and God allowing that in the form of a test. This was directly God's judgment, and aside from hellfire itself, which is of course the worst and final punishment, as far as earthly punishments go, this one, so far, this takes the cake, and unfortunately it was so bad, it actually made me chuckle, like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. So let's hop into it. We're going to start at verse 4. This is referring to King Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, the godly king, or one of the godly kings of Judah. So he named Jehoram his firstborn, his heir, and the one who would be king next. So, 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 4. Now when Jehoram was established over the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and killed all his brothers with the sword, and also others of the princes of Israel. So, obviously, this is a horrible guy. This is a very bad start. And things are not going very well. So, hop down to verse 8. In his days, Edom revolted against Judah's authority and made a king over themselves. So Jehoram went out with his officers and all his chariots with him. And he rose by night and attacked the Edomites, who had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots. Thus Edom has been in revolt against Judah's authority to this day. At that time, Limna revolted against his rule, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. And jump down to verse 12, And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, And this is where it's just, it just is like, Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Thus says the Lord God of your father David, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat your father, or in the ways of Asa king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the harlot like the harlotry of the house of Ahab, and also have killed your brothers, those of your father's household, who are better than yourself. Nice dig there. Behold, the Lord will strike your people with a serious affliction, your children, your wives, and all your possessions, and you will become very sick with the disease of your intestines until your intestines come out by reason of the sickness day by day. Whew! That's one heck of a prophecy from a very established and the most respected prophet of his day and age. And even to this day, Elijah is one of the most famous out of all the prophets. And he doesn't even have a book named after him. So moving on to verse 16, Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabians who were near the Ethiopians. And they came up into Judah and invaded it, and carried away all the possessions that were found in the king's house and also his sons and his wives, so that there was not a son left to him except Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. After all this, after all this, so that the first part of what Elijah said came to pass, and he lost all of his family except for his youngest son, which is incredibly devastating. After all this, the Lord struck him in his intestines with an incurable disease. Then it happened in the course of time, after the end of two years, that his intestines came out because of his sickness. So he died in severe pain. And his people made no burning for him like the burning for his fathers. That just thinking of these things happening is depressing, sorrowful, and just it makes me cringe so hard because that is incredibly that is so incredibly bad. It's so incredibly bad. And the re a little bit of a smile is teasing my face because I know the verse I'm about to read to you. So let's hop into it. Just the, the coup de grace, the icing on the cake. Verse 20, he was 32 years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem eight years, so he died at the age of 40, and to no one's sorrow departed. However, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. And to no one's sorrow departed. He wasn't liked, he wasn't loved, and even though he was buried in his home city, he didn't even get to be buried with the rest of the kings. This guy was loathed and hated. And it makes me wonder where the people just like, they saw him suffering with this disease of his bowels. And they were just like, serves that guy right. Just the incredibly fierce judgment of God on sin. And I don't doubt that the judgment on him was particularly bad. 
because he had a godly inheritance to come from, and he chose the complete opposite path. So God was particularly fierce in his wrath against him because he knew better. He'd been given a great example, and, be, and he'd been given so much opportunity. He was made the king. <sighs> Excuse me. And not his brothers, who were better than him, according to the prophet Elijah. And since he called the judgments correctly, he, was, he probably called that part correctly as well. And as far as godly morals and laws, they were undoubtedly better than him. And so this incredibly fierce judgment comes against him. And I have to chuckle because it is so, so bad. And the fact that just no one, no one cared about that he died. And I'm guessing, and this is an assumption admittedly, they didn't even care how he died. They were probably glad that he died. And it even says in Proverbs that when a wicked king passes, that the people rejoice. So, my gosh, what a warning to those who would just spit in the face of a godly inheritance and godly blessing. What a dire warning. And I'm sorry at the end, it is funny there. <laughs> to no one's sorrow, to no one's regret, he died. So, that was the end of him. So, we have been warned and maybe even gotten a laugh out of it. Apparently, I'm, apparently the, people of Ju the people of Judah also, they didn't care when he died. They probably were like, serves the guy right. They probably got a chuckle out of it. Assumptions, yes. But if I can laugh about it, if it's worded so tongue-in-cheek in Scripture, more than likely a few chuckles were had at the time of his passing. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.